Welcome to our first of hopefully many video tutorials about how to make Firetail productive for you. For this tutorial, we assume that you're somehow familiar with MoveBank. You don't need to have a MoveBank account though. Firetail has a wide range of use cases, from field observation to lab analysis. Today, I would like to make you familiar with some basic steps, like loading data, observing previously recorded individuals and some basic time navigation within a dataset. Let's dive right in. We start Firetail via the desktop icon and have a quick look at the splash screen. Now you should see a couple of sample projects. These projects are freely available from the MoveBank data repository. On rollover a project for about like a second, you'll see the authors, citation and abstract of the associated paper and the dataset. This view also provides you with links to the original paper or the journal that published the data. Let's choose the first project by Dodge et al. covering albatross tracks near the Galapagos Islands. This is data from a classic dataset with no associated acceleration data. Therefore, the download size is quite small here, roughly 5 MB. Now let's have a look at the interface here. These tabs here provide you with an overview of the most important windows of Firetail. Let's discuss them briefly. The Open Studies view refers to this tree view here. It provides you with an overview of all recorded animals that have been tracked in the Open Study. You can select the deselect trajectories via these checkboxes and see how many recorded timestamps exist for this individual. The viewport acceleration data will provide you with a time-synchronized viewport of acceleration data for all recorded individuals. This project has no associated acceleration data, so let's leave this out for now. We will cover the analysis and annotation of acceleration data in a later video. The event data section provides you with additional recorded events apart from GPS coordinates like temperature, height, speed and the like. Deselect all albatrosses and choose one individual only. As you see, this data is fully synchronized with the GPS positions. Let's hide the event data for now. To show the individual on the map, click the magnifying glass. In the bottom section here, you have full control over time. The date and time here is the current timestamp examined. Over here, this time slider allows you to change the timestamp and the region of interest. As you can see, moving the slider will make all selected individuals move on the map. Let's choose a subset of individuals. Double-clicking a point on the trajectory will show you where each individual was at the selected time point. Obviously, the number of actually recorded positions cannot provide the complete trajectory. In this case, the position is interpolated. Firetail can replay your data from the current selection. Just hit play. Well, the coordinates change, but this is not very informative. We can scroll into the map to see more details here. But this may get a bit boring after a while. Luckily, we can speed up the replay. This menu here allows you to adjust the replay speed. Let's choose 1 second is 10 minutes. So each second will now correspond to 600 seconds. We see that the albatross has left the region. We'll stop the replay for now and scroll out a bit and drag and drop the map to a more sensible viewport. Hit play again. We can now observe movement patterns. But the current data covers several months of observations. Say we are interested 
on patterns on the day level. For this, we can use the fire tail length. Select the fire tail of 7 days and select the time window of 1 week here. We can now use the plus and minus controls to jump to the next time window of the same length. The interval start and end switches to blue if a window is selected in this way. You can see this here. Now, another interesting way to see this dataset is to extend the view to observe all animals at once. Let's select all of them and reset and rewind the time slider. This is done using the R button. We restrict the fire tail to 3 days and compress the whole replay to a duration of 90 seconds. Now we can see the movement patterns live. As soon as something interesting happens, we can simply press pause and focus on any details we care about. If you have movebank data that you would like to see in action, make sure to download Firetail today and try it out. In other videos, we will show you how to work with and to annotate your acceleration data, how to work with reference data uh, to analyze group patterns, and how to use Firetail's built-in movebank interface. Thanks for watching.